and I am trying slightly out of my normal comfort zone because I'm using Jay's vice. So it's a little bit higher than I normally have it, but I wouldn't worry about that. I use a bright thread. Um, you can use any bright thread. The only part that you're going to see is the is the tie off on the little head as you finish. But it's always good to have a bright thread in the surf. It, it makes a difference. So you just dress the shank. And I try and give it as long a body as I can without going too far past the barb. And then at that point, can you guys see? At that point, I just build up a bit of thread just so that the tail doesn't lie down, that it sort of sits proud at the back. He's got a comp. So you just tie on your bead chain, which will become the eyeball. With a figure of eight. The dimension is going to be roughly the length of the shank, plus a little bit, because it's uh, he wants the marabou to stick out slightly further than the antron, and the antron is approximately the length of the shank. Marabou is quite, quite fly away when you're working with it, so I find if you just dampen it slightly, just brings it back under control while you're working with it. <coughs> you just pinch wrap it in there. All of this tying now is, is going to be covered so you can you can go in loose turns. So the length of the entron, approximately the length of the shank. It's easier if you take your your cotton back a little bit, um, because then you can get the pinch wrap more accurately without fighting with the dumbbell eyes, because they do get in the way as you start off. If you find the stuff is trying to wrap around the shank while you're tying, don't put downward pressure when you're tying, rather put upward pressure on the near side because it tends not to pull it over. <laughs> yeah, we've had worse than that. At this point I generally just press this flat so that it sort of clads the, the, the shank more evenly and then just pinch it at the end and then wind up. Those of you that don't have a rotary vice, you're probably going to have to tie off. But it's not a train smash. You can do that. It's just a bit obviously more fiddly and less convenient. But a lot easier to work with and you'll see in a second when you spin this stuff <coughs> that you can't really do it without the hackle pliers. The 
this is not a very tight spin. It doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to matter if it's loose, and you're trying to get coverage as well. So again, I still think this is more of a cold water colour. You probably find he's fishing colder waters than we have. At this point you spin it counterclockwise and you spin it tight. So it makes a little rope. Because we're going to rivet with that. And that's really, from the, the originator's point of view, this is more of he, he finds it just aesthetically pleasing. I don't think he, he believes that it really helps the fly, but it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, a rope is stronger than a, a loose braid. This I tend to pull a bit more tightly. see the effect. Red. Give it a turn for luck. I'm sitting here puzzling what the hell is this? Jeez. Generally, yeah, so it'll get you in the shoulder rather than the side of your leg. Okay, and then we just wrap it around twice that way. Sometimes go around again just to give it a really bold head. A little bit fiddly at the end, but not too difficult. back towards the head so that you've got enough space to get your scissors in. Just build up a bit of a thread head. I don't think anyone's too fussed about the colour of the head. I use the pink because it's bright. goes straight into the chenille so you've got to be ultra cautious when you put it on obviously you can use varnish I just don't have any being a simple person I just use the same old stuff ok and that's it, very easy